let's introduce what we call the unit vector. The unit vector takes any vector I want, so here I'm going to call that vector v, any vector I want, and basically all it does is we're going to change the magnitude of that vector to bring it down to fit within the unit circle. So if your original vector is like this, you would scale it up to fit within the unit circle. If your original vector is like this, you would scale it down to fit in the unit circle. That's what we call the unit vector. Notice we're not changing the direction of the vector, only the magnitude. Now the easiest way to scale it up or down is just take the vector and divide by the magnitude of that vector and that will scale it up or down to fit within the unit circle. So let's look at example two. I have this vector at negative 5 comma 12. I am going to start by finding the magnitude of that vector, aka r. Looks like that is 13. Now, right now this vector definitely is not fitting in the unit circle. We got negative 5 comma 12, it's all the way up there. Our unit circle is about that big. So we need to scale this vector down to fit within the unit circle. So all I'm going to do is take this vector's components and I am going to divide by the magnitude and that's going to give me a vector that is in the exact same direction but now it fits within the unit circle. It's much smaller of a vector. So that is how we come up with what we call the unit vector. Now we have two unit vectors that are especially important. We have unit vector i, which is defined as 1 comma 0. Basically it's the unit vector in the x direction. And we have unit vector j, which is 0 comma 1. That is the unit vector in the y direction. Now the reason we talk about i, uh, vector i and vector j is they're going to allow us to write our vector from component form in a slightly different way. Let me give you an example. Let's take this vector v and let's first find it in component form. So it looks like initial point is 2, negative 6. There's my initial point P, and terminal point negative 6, comma 6. That's my terminal point Q. So component form, we just take this vector and break it down into its X and its Y. So it looks like in the X direction, it's going negative 8 negative 8 to get over to Q, and in the Y direction it's going up 12, up 12 to get to Q. So in component form we write this vector as negative 8 comma 12. Now we've done component form before, that's nothing new. However, we can now write this component form as principal unit form in terms of i and j. And we do that by saying negative 8 times the principal vector that goes in the x direction, which I did as green, plus 12 times the principal vector that goes in the y direction. Because this is my x component, that's my y component. And I want to show you really quickly that this and this are actually the same thing. So if I take my negative 8 and I times it by my 
x direction principal vector. That's i. That's what we defined it as in the previous page. And I add that to 12 times my principal vector in the y direction. That's what j is. I defined that in the previous page. Oops, I really should have vector symbols over those. Now I can multiply 8 in, that's just scalar multiplication. I can multiply 12 in, that's scalar multiplication. And then this is vector addition. So I add the x components and I add the y components. So negative 8 plus 0 is negative 8. 0 plus 12 is 12. So now you can see that this is actually the same exact vector as our component form, we're just writing it using our principal unit vectors rather than in components. But they're the exact same thing. Now, you might ask, why do I need two different ways to write the same thing? Well, vector addition, when it's written like this with our principal unit vectors, is actually really nice. Let me show you. Let's come here. I have vector v which is 4i minus 2j. So just so you know, that would be the same as the component form for negative 2. And vector w, which is negative 3i plus j, that would be the same component form as negative 3 comma 1. I want to find 3v plus w. So let's start by just plugging this in. I know that v is 4i minus 2j, and I know w is negative 3i plus j. Well, look how nice this is when I write it with my principal unit vectors. I can just think of it as distributing. So this would become 12i minus 6j, um, and then I have minus 3i plus j. And here's the really nice thing with addition when I use my principal vectors. You can just think of it as combining like terms. Combine the i's together, that combines your x components. Combine the j's together, that combines your y components. So 12 minus 3 would be 9i, and negative 6 plus 1 would be minus 5 j. And that would be my answer, which remember would be the same as the component form 9, negative 5. So that's where writing it in principal unit vector form gets really nice because we can just think of it as combining like terms to get our final answer. So that is all we're going to do today with principal unit vectors um, and unit vectors. The last problem we have today is one more story or application problem that's going to tie everything we've learned about vectors together so far.